Here we go. Is fruit good or bad for you? And Jay, do you want to contextualize this clip? Uh, how did you find it? Oh, I, I mean, it's, you guys did this again. You, you did this really great documentary on his sugar, the bitter truth presentation and uh, pointing out some of the issues with the claims he made. And he makes some of them here and, you know, his, his general notion that fructose is a poison, which he's literally said word for word. And um, so he kind of talks about that here and makes some claims as well about why that is entirely inapplicable to fruit, which maybe will challenge a little bit. So, well, uh, yeah. Well, everybody knows that fructose is bad for you, but I'll play this clip anyways. <laughs> the goal is to keep your consumption of added sugars below 25 grams a day. That would be six teaspoons. That's about what your liver can handle. Very similar to, by the way, to what your uh, liver can do with alcohol. That's about as much as your liver can handle alcohol too. And the reason is because alcohol and fructose are metabolized the same way. So it makes sense that about six teaspoons of fructose, oh, sorry, of sugar, therefore three teaspoons or 12 grams of fructose, 25 grams of sugar, because they're 50-50, um, would be sort of the maximum. If you eat whole food, you have nothing to worry about. Because if you eat whole food, your uh, fructose content beyond fruit is minimal. And the fruit is, has fructose, but not very much. And you're not going to absorb it because of the fiber. I don't know how you could argue with that, but uh, I don't know. Dalton, do you want to take a stab at it? Uh, do I, um, <laughs> I, um, there's just, there's quite a bit to, to unpack there. I would love to know where he's getting the, the 25 figure from, I would assume it's from some kind of like epidemiological work where they're kind of just looking at different populations and saying, oh, well, these people eat this much. And then this people, these people eat this much. Uh, and then they're kind of manufacturing a threshold of of sugar intake from there um but yeah i also don't really know what he means when he says like how much it can handle like like what is is, is I, I assume he's implying that like past that you're gonna get um de novo lipogenesis so you're gonna start creating fat um but there's i just don't really understand where that really comes from i i think it's because fructose tends to be more lipogenic than straight glucose. Um, but even with that considered, you know, if you look at fatty liver disease, uh, the vast majority of the fat contained in the liver uh, is mainly from free fatty acids, which ironically is, you know, what becomes elevated when you're fasting or stressed or, or obese or whatever the case may be. Um, so, so there's that, uh, but but I don't really know where the 25 figure is coming from. And I've never really understood where uh, this whole like alcohol parallel thing came from, because I think everyone knows at this point that glucose is something that, you know, your body makes and that it metabolizes that it needs. Um, and fructose is not <laughs> very far removed from glucose at all in terms of it, how it works metabolically. I mean, it undergoes two enzymatic steps and then it basically goes into the same metabolic pathway that, that glucose does. Um, so I, I don't know where, uh, this idea comes from that it is metabolized at all, similarly to, to alcohol. Um, but he, he does that thing in his, in his talk and you see this picture like surface around, uh, quite a bit where, he has like this big picture of the cell and then it's like all these arrows with all these different reactions and all this stuff. And, you know, if, if you don't, if you don't understand biochemistry very well, then it's like very intimidating. And it's like some doctor talking with all this confidence and you're like, oh, wow. Like, well, I already know sugar's bad. So he's gotta be, he's gotta be right. Um, and then people just kind of run with it. But if you actually look inside that diagram, like a lot of the arrows and what he's implying he he kind of makes huge leaps of faith, if you will, uh, in his assumptions of how this stuff works. Um, when in reality, that's not it's not really uh, my understanding of 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 fructose metabolism. And, and one thing I want to point out is that 
uh, a lot of the studies that are done showing that that fructose is really bad uh, is typically with isolated fructose. Um, and that is a problem because uh, isolated fructose is very, very poorly absorbed in your intestines. And then it is basically led uh, or sorry, it's basically left over to the clonic bacteria where it ferments and things. And this is where you know you can get uh, as little as like 15 grams of, of isolated fructose. I think the figure is that that will cause GI problems in about 50% of healthy people. So it's very poorly absorbed on its own. Uh, so what happens is that when you co-administer glucose or you're giving sucrose, which is a link of fructose and glucose, the intestinal absorption of fructose uh, shoots up dramatically and you absorb pretty much all of it. Uh, and I think it's pretty unclear as to why that is, but we do know that glucose basically um, uh, upregulates the absorption of fructose. So, so that's a big deal because if you have the fructose not getting absorbed and then it's feeding these clonic bacteria, it's causing all this irritation in the gut, probably elevating serotonin, causing some element of intestinal permeability that can cause systemic inflammation. And that is really going to drive all these different conditions, not the fructose being metabolized itself, I don't think. And then you can see in some of these studies, you can administer antibiotics alongside the isolated fructose and largely protect against uh, those effects of the isolated fructose. Um, so those would be those would be my main comments on that. You know, again, we did we did the whole video, uh, which, by the way, is like our by far our most hated video uh, <laughs> because it's really it's really funny because we have, you know, everyone's like sees us as like these like freedom fighters that come in and like dismantle these like arguments about like big pharma and, and big food and like they're like yeah like you guys are really like doing great stuff like destroying these like big corporations and then it's like you look at the comments under the the lusting video and it's like these guys are just paid off by big sugar they have no <laughs> idea what they're talking about how much did you get paid to do this like is uh is pretty funny <laughs> well, I, I mean dalton you should disclose your uh domino funding your domino sugar funding i think that's disingenuous that you don't disclose that on your videos yeah, I mean, I mean, we get we get called we get called shills for a lot of things. We got, um, you know, we did the whole video on methylene blue. People, people were saying like, "Oh my god, this is like a carcinogen. It's so dangerous. Like you're going to give people serotonin syndrome and and all these things." Uh, I remember one comment literally said, "Drip, drip, blood, so much blood on your hands from talking about <laughs> taking low dose methylene blue." Um, so so it, it can it can honestly like get in your head at points, and I'm like, "Am I?" am I causing heart? And then I'm like, no, like that's not, they're not even coming with anything <laughs> substantial in a lot of those instances. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we get, we get accused of, of being shills quite a bit. Um, so but yeah, if we had, if we had, uh, you know, some kind of commission to sell sugar, like, please believe it would be, we would advertise that, uh, and we would, we would take our cuts. So <laughs> but it's just funny hearing like people say that we're shills for anything. It gives you kind of a new lens because a lot of people say that a lot of other people are controlled opposition or whatever. And then it's like people calling us that kind of just like opened my eyes that like maybe not everyone's controlled opposition. I mean, obviously some people are, but it's just funny. Like, yeah, literally two guys just, just making videos and people think that we're getting paid off by like sugar lobbyists. Like we're going in the back rooms and everyone's in suits. Um, un unfortunately, Jack, that's exactly what controlled opposition would claim. So I'm going to have to put you in that <laughs> camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes it, when I'm thinking, oh man, like I got so much heat for this or that. And then I'm thinking like, well, how did Ray feel doing this for like 50 plus years? You know, like it, it really puts things into perspective when you've been doing it for 10 years and he's been doing it for so much longer and like swimming upstream can take a lot out of a person, but that's why it's good to find hobbies. Definitely. Yeah. It, it's like funny chickens, too. Like chicken farming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> chicken farming. <laughs> it's funny when you read the research too on fructose, like people talk about, talk about being like a shill for something. And then you go through the studies with fructose and you see all the problems and you see the, Every single article just starts out like fructose has increased, like high fructose corn syrup, all this type of stuff. And it's a health, it's a health problem and whatnot. And then you go and look at the evidence and you go and look at like what the studies are actually showing. You know, you have Lustig talking about six grams of 
or 12 grams of fructose being a problem. And when you look in the research, they are like they're giving people 0.75 grams of fructose per kilogram of body weight. So I'm like 90 kilos or say I'm 100 kilos. That's 75 grams of fructose in one sitting, which would be the equivalent of 150 grams of sugar and then not really finding massive problems in healthy people. And so it's like they, you're looking at that and you're looking at what they're doing in, in rats with fructose and whatnot. And it's like there's a difference in ability to actually for the rats to actually metabolize fructose compared to humans. And then as to what you were talking about there, Dalton, is they actually find increased portal portal blood levels of endotoxin after fructose challenges in animals. So that it's literally can create endotoxin. Endotoxin can upregulate the inflammatory pathways in the liver. I think Lustig is saying that the JNK pathway is the one that is triggering issues from fructose in both alcohol. And then just like this, this blanket statement that, oh, they're metabolized the same. And then you can, you go and look at the metabolism of, of, of alcohol versus fructose. And it's like fructose being converted into lactate, glucose, ATP with like a less than 3% de novo lipogenesis. And then you look at alcohol and it's like gets converted into acetyl aldehyde and then creates a whole bunch of ROS and like damage to the liver structure. And it's like, where is the comparison? Like you're talking about this one downstream pathway and it could be related to these other factors. And then it's, and then you're seeing like the difference between the metabolites of fructose and alcohol. And like it's not even the same thing. Like they're not even close to comparable. So th those types, this type of argument, I don't know where he's getting, you know, that 25 gram recommendation. Like it's especially because they have iso they have the isotope tracer studies where they they give people sugar and they have the sugar molecules tagged so you can see like how they're metabolized in the body. And you're not seeing these problems that people are talking about. You're not really seeing high levels of fat production from fructose. You're not seeing it cause high levels of inflammation. You're not seeing changes in people's uh, liver function values or their uric acid or anything like that. So it's just like that's baseless claims. And it's even supported further when he starts talking about like, well, fruit is fine because fiber inhibits fructose absorption. It's like that is completely false. Like you, you are going to get the fructose from the fruit that you're going to eat. If it has a marginal decrease in absorption, it's still like irrelevant to the overall picture. It, and the other thing, too, is like three oranges will give you that that amount of fructose that he's saying is absolutely to toxic. And there's no studies really supporting the that fruits or or fruit juice or anything like that is actually causing these metabolic issues in healthy people. What you're seeing more so is like if you take diabetic people and you dose them with fructose by itself or you give them ridiculously high doses of sucrose in overfeeding studies. Yeah, then they have problems, but it's like you can't parse that out between overfeeding. So there's like it, there's just no there's no support for these claims. And then it's let's wax this one pathway, you know, and then and then when you when you have cognitive dissonance, that fruit isn't causing these problems. Then we have to say, oh, you know, fiber is the reason it's because fiber is inhibiting absorption. And it's like these this is not like that's not as a researcher that is like questionable to just make claims like that. And like push that out to people as if this is how it actually is. Those types of things. There's only one study I've seen, some random Iranian study that showed feeding people like fruit, some fruit products, which included a whole group of things, possibly caused issues. And the most, the rest of them is like orange juice does this, like, you know, it improves these values or grape juice improves these values, whatever the deal is. So the, the lustig thing, yeah, we've talked about it ad nauseum as well, even on on energy balance or uh, on this podcast, it's just, it's ridiculous. The stuff, the things that get said there. And they are the most hated on videos for sure. I mean, the, just like you guys said, the comments, people, people feel really defensive for, for Robert Lustig here. And yeah, I mean, these claims, some of them are ridiculous. I mean, to call fructose a poison and then to say that if you have it with fiber, it's fine. Like Anything that's an actual poison, we're talking mercury, arsenic, <laughs> like real poisons, having fiber with it doesn't do anything. It's not going to save you from consuming those things. And it's not going to also prevent fructose absorption, as you were saying, Mike. And this idea that 12, 12 grams is what the liver can handle is insane. There's no, like the the evidence for this is is not there at all. I mean, for one, our livers are incredibly effective at handling fructose. As you were saying, they, they oxidize it, convert it to glycogen or convert it to glucose or lactate and send it out. 
And the study is looking at even pure fructose, looking at like a 30 gram bolus versus 60 gram in humans. We handle it just as well. And that's pure fructose, not considering all of the absorption issues you guys have mentioned as well. And to compare it to alcohol like it does is just disingenuous. It, there's two pathways he points to. One is the J and K inflammation pathway and the other is de novo lipogenesis, which are heavily disfavored pathways when it comes to fructose. Like 99% of that fructose is not going to be influencing those pathways. But he uses rat studies where they're given pure fructose, massive amounts of endotoxin and polyunsaturated fats, which if you account for the endotoxin and polyunsaturated fats, that effect of fructose goes away even in the rats. So yeah, it's uh, you get you're you guys did a great again a, a great video talking and you could say debunking even though I hate that word uh, his his <laughs> yeah presentation <laughs> honestly uh, there there were probably yeah there were probably a number of things that I would have done differently with that video uh, looking back on it um, but yeah I would I would agree that like the the debunk thing is like is is a bit authoritarian in and of itself so i i, I would agree with that i would actually, I would actually supposed go... to be a critique so sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it just, i think it's just overused and, and yeah no i mean go ahead. for sure for sure but i would actually i would even go a step further and say like even like just white sugar again is is different from isolated fructose or even things like high fructose corn syrup um and and you know we we did a whole uh, I did a whole thread on Twitter about this, which people were exploding over, but basically showing that in the, in the, um, basically in the pre, I would say sixties era, it was very common for, uh, families to be, you know, it, a lot of it's per capita, just like purchasing data, but it was very normal for families to allocate essentially like a hundred grams of white sugar per day per person in the in the household. So even if you were to account for waste there, which is like at best like five or 10%, you're still talking about massive loads of just pure white sugar. Um, and that's exactly what they use in some of the uh, in some of the animal studies for the, I know Kyle has mentioned this before uh, on one of Danny's uh, older generative energies, but what they what they use for the control diets in in animals a lot of the times if if you're doing a low fat diet um it'll be typically like 70 percent carbohydrate and like 35 percent of that will come from pure sugar and that's what you're using in order to keep the animals lean because you know it's going to maintain them at this weight and it's literally the diet that you use to compare what you think is going to be unhealthy because you're so sure <laughs> it's going to keep the animals lean and and free of disease. Um, so, so yeah. And then, you know, you could talk about, uh, Walter Kempner and the rice diet. And then there were a number of other, uh, studies, you know, from decades ago where they were giving people with diabetes, simple sugars and, and seeing, and seeing massive improvements. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think you guys nailed it. I think it's, it's a lot different of a story when you're talking about isolated fructose or when you're talking about overfeeding, or when you're talking about uh, giving it to people that are already unhealthy, because another thing that upregulates your de novo lipogenesis is cortisol, which is like basically uniformly elevated in people uh, with diabetes or obesity. So obviously you're going to see a worse outcome there. If you enjoyed that clip, you'll definitely want to download the free energy balance food guide. The energy balance food guide will help you determine exactly what to eat to optimally support your metabolism and help you lose weight, improve your digestion, get amazing sleep, boost your energy, and so much more. The food guide makes it extremely easy to get started with a bioenergetic approach to optimizing your health. So head over to jfeldmanwellness.com guide to download your free energy balance food guide.